You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. blow, 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 blow. Prepare to be astonished. tuning in to another headline this if this is your first time here please allow yourself to take note of these podcasting locations we are available on itunes just search for headline this and check out links to itunes on youtube at the main website hltpod.stephenradford.com well as i sit here right now i'm 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 feeling very cold we're just recording this outside within well within the conservatory and um it's it's getting cold it's it's getting closer to winter closer and closer to winter the leaves are falling off the trees it's definitely halloween it's definitely going to be you can definitely get that feeling of there being halloween right around the corner if not when you're listening to this happening right now uh so in this episode this is the third episode of three uh in which i speak to three separate people from, well, they're all separate people. They're not attached. <laughs> We're speaking to three different people from the same past, from the same um, podcasting past. This time, I'm in conversation with the enigmatic, the prolific producer, writer, director, illustrator, and former radio show producer and podcast host, Brian Byers. Now, to me, Brian is first and foremost a storyteller who in recent years went from being a supernatural investigator to podcasting about the paranormal. And then beyond that, leaving all that behind, he became an award-winning short filmmaker with shorts including Streets and the award-winning Sarah's Crossing. And that's Sarah without the H, Sarah's Crossing, which is you know one of those short films that makes you think, I cannot wait to see what this guy is going to do next. Brian um, is also, or was also, the uh, the concept ideas guy, the creator, the producer behind the TLC show My Five Wives, which uh, which I believe enjoyed two seasons, two seasons on uh, TLC. I don't think we got that in the UK, but I believe that was a US TLC show. Um, but he's also worked within a multitude of different media venues from video games, photography, magazine writing, children's books, animation, corporate media, lecturing and teaching. A little bit too much inflection there. I'm very sorry. I, I just can't help myself. The list goes on. <laughs> Brian's film and television highs occupy most of his time in Utah, um, where he built up his crews, many of which were mentored through his passion for creating quality content. A lot of them have, have moved on to, uh, to work on other projects. He has since then moved away to Georgia, right across country, and is beginning a new life, taking on board a continued learning in what is a new angle, a new breath of understanding for the teachings of the Bible from a more supernatural standpoint. And uh, it's it's a very exciting adventure that he's going on. He may have left his Utah life behind, but in this conversation we learned that he has not let go of his love of story and his passion for making film. Far from it. With his wife Jennifer by his side, there is always a way and there is a wealth of talent out there for their combined ideas to flow through. I for one cannot wait to see what they're going to be doing next. Ready or not, settling into the present and looking on towards the future, this is Brian Byers. Bag it up, everybody. Bienvenido al correo de voz Orange. Tu llamada será facturada después del tono. Ha llamado al correo de voz de ocho cero nueve. What the heck? Um, that doesn't sound like uh, Brian Byers' number. Oh my gosh. Um, let's try again. So let's try. I'll save number in a minute. Let's go. Oh, 
Hello, Stephen. How are you? Hello, Brian. Very well, thank you. you. Oh, you, you sound nice and clear. This is great. This is better than the Spanish voicemail, huh? So here we are. We have Brian Byers on the phone from Savannah, yes. Savannah, Georgia. Actually, uh, we're in Monroe, Georgia. Monroe. But Monroe. yeah, <laughs> it's just Georgia. It's not you know. So Monroe is how far away from Savannah? Uh, about four hours. <laughs> so it's a, it's a big deal. It's a big difference. That's like, I, I would, yeah, not really. No, I mean, it's drivable. I figure if it's drivable, it doesn't, it's not really that big of a difference. No. Georgia versus Utah, that's a completely different ball game. Yeah, but every, it seems as though everything is drivable in America to a certain extent because you just put your foot down, <laughs> cruise control, and you just go in one direction, right? That's, that's kind well, of Well, yeah, you, I was going to say, you witnessed that not too long ago, a few years back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's when when I went to go and visit Jamie. That was a four hour trek, and she seemed to just yeah. treat it like it was just going down for supplies at the local store. Was, yeah, yeah, going to the market. <laughs> that's it. But uh, yeah, you've uh, you've you've only been back in Georgia. Um, you you were you grew up in Georgia, right? I did. I grew up uh, for the most part my entire life uh, in different parts of Georgia uh, up until college. Uh, I went to, I was in Savannah. I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design. And mm -hmm. after that, I moved to California and I traveled the United States, uh, going from job to job, city to city, just learning as much as I could. But, um, yeah, I'm back. It's, uh, since July, uh, July 5th, I believe is, um, technically our, our arrival date. So it's yeah, so cool to be there. Yeah, it, it's 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 strange because you you always think you you're never going to go back to where you grew up, but there's always right. yeah. I mean, I I kept on leaving leaving England and then coming back, and it just seems to be a natural natural force that just brings you back. Do you feel as though right. that was, yeah. that's that's what brought you back was just this natural yearning to just be there? Yeah, you know, I think I think uh, most of my family is here, mm -hmm. so. Um, after about 30 years uh, of just being all over the place, yeah, just it was just time. Like you, it was kind of like uh, something on the clock just turned over, and it was time to go back home. You know, time to go back. I love it. I'm, I'm like, I'm really glad to be back. We brought the whole family, um, four kids plus one in the oven, and uh, we'll have five in December. It's crazy. Yeah, little bear, first Christmas. Yeah, little bear. We little bear. are so excited. <laughs> Fantastic. Have you got names already picked out, or? Well, we do. Yes. <laughs> Jenna sitting here right now, smiling. It's. I don't think we've announced it, so we're just going to keep it as keep it bear for. Yeah. It's it's Stephen, <laughs> right? It's it's definitely. Oh, how did you know? Oh no. I <laughs> 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 told you, huh? Well. <laughs> Psychic past, you know that, yeah. Um, but, uh, so, so you you went to college and you uh, did art and design. Was that art illustration? It's funny. I went in. Uh, I went in with the uh, understanding that I was going to become an illustrator for mm -hmm. a children's book, and that was my goal. And I ended up creating the animation department at SCAD. So. While I was there, I just started dabbling with uh, art and animation with their computers mm -hmm. and uh, helped the other professors to create uh, to create the program for the animation uh, program that they have now. Um, I right when I graduated, they ended up hiring me as a professor, the youngest professor that, that they ever had, uh, so I could run the department. <laughs> it was crazy, that sounds and like, yeah. I did that. Yeah, I did that for as long as I could, but I realized I couldn't be a professor being so young because um, my students, uh, specifically the, the girls in my class were my age, and it's like you can't fraternize with the students. So um, that temptation was too hard. So I just I said, I'll come back and I'll teach when I get really old. Yeah, yeah, and you're not there yet. <laughs> You're not Probably really. not a good idea to have a classroom with a bunch of girls and, you yeah. know, mean, yeah, it's just, it didn't work. 
Yeah, that there's also that not not just that, but there's that there is a barrier of of uh, you know you're too young, you're one of us, you know. Absolutely, and they, everyone felt that they were like, "Oh, you're our best friend. You're so cool," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta show, <laughs> you gotta show you up. Want. You gotta do the work. You gotta make sure that they're exactly. taking you seriously." Right. Yeah, it's true. So, so, so from from the very beginning, you're 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 pretty much still doing the thing that you've always wanted to do, which is which is fantastic. Um, I you know, yeah, yes, you're right. You, it's kind of come full full circle again because yeah, there there seems to be a lot of branches to illustration. Um, like you say, there's there's animation, illustration for for magazines, um, for right. books, what have you, but. Uh, is there anything in the illustration world that you have not yet ventured towards or actually tried? So that's a that's a really that's a really good question. I I um I have to say that my bucket for my bucket list is completely empty. Um anytime oh, right. there's something I would do, I put it in that bucket, but I end up doing it. Um I have uh I branched off from, you know, illustration to animation to game design. Um, worked on many CD-ROMs for uh, companies like Disney and Hasbro. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I ended up working on Blade Runner, which was a cool game that came out in the 90s. Oh, of um, course, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, play, I played that was, game. <laughs> Did you? Yes, I totally played that game. I was a huge fan. Huge. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. There was a another game. Um, it, was a, it was a book series called Zork, and mm -hmm. it was a choose-your-own-adventure, choose but it ended up being this really weird cult-following type of game, and I ended up working on that and doing all the storyboards. But, yeah, I went from uh, illustration to animation to games to uh, learning software for children, uh, mm -hmm. illustrating books, and then got into live action to sort of jumped in uh, with filming TV shows and uh, got into photography. So to answer your question, I guess I just sort of have done it all. That's, that's, that, uh, that's I guess, off of my major, like illustration and, and uh, entertainment. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of anything else I want to do. Um, uh, I'm writing a book right now. No, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and I've I've tried to write this book several times, and um, recently God sort of spoke to me, and not sort of definitely spoke to me, and said, "You have to write this." And then uh, I was in church the other day, and I got validation that I'm on the right track. I need to finish this book. So is this is this um, for a, um, is this a fiction, a work of fiction? It is not. It's an actual, mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of a unique thing to even talk about. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is going to fit the show, but um, it is uh, my experience uh, in the supernatural world, um, which you know me from. Yes. Uh, yes. From the the ghost and psychic world to the. Uh, the transition of the supernatural in God's kingdom and understanding that. So it's really kind of a complicated thing that has happened. I've had a major life change. Yeah. And it's yeah. affected a lot of my work. Like, uh, you know me from uh, doing uh, ghostology and uh, other radio type programs. And, that's it. Uh, that's that's where it all started for us, definitely. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and now, uh, you know, I was doing horror movies and, and, you know, I was winning awards for having the best horror movie short films and mm -hmm. getting into that. And then my life just completely changed, uh, in a very good way. And I experienced the supernatural world in the church, which is, is that, something, is something that you don't hear about too much, really. It's not something that, you know uh, what? It's funny you say that. Actually, yeah. actually, it used to be heard of all the time. All right. <laughs> and and then it just disappeared. Like everyone just sort of wrote it off. Yet miracles still happen. And then to actually witness these miracles um, and 
and be part of be part of this is just been a, an eye opening experience for me. It's something that I did not see coming. Exactly, and, uh, but, but in a in a way, uh, everything that you've kind of been doing has been leading up to this. So, um, yes. what you were doing with yes. the supernatural before was just without the uh, without the religious aspect of it, and now it's kind of just come in for you. It's come to you in a way, and uh, it has. It has. As a matter of fact, yeah. there's a, a, a kind of an awakening that took place where, and you know, there's gonna, there's probably a lot of people that if they if they hear me talk about this, they'll be like either mind blown or whatever that do know me. Um, so I went from uh, the supernatural belief system of psychics and um, and ghosts and spirits and. Being able to, you know, like ghost hunters, the whole thing, yeah, just, yeah. you know, chase down spirits, to now having a different belief. And I, I, I refer to where I was as the counterfeit of supernatural and, and what is genuine supernatural. And, you know, yeah, it really yeah. goes back, it really goes back to the old, to the old, uh, old days, uh, and like the New Testament, where yeah. they were casting out demons and the whole thing, and you know, a lot of that is still taking place uh, in a very real way. It's not. It's not all. It's not like a TV show. You can't really make a. I guess you could, but it. It's not what a lot of people make it out to be. They make it. No. Um, it's either you know we have Benny Hinn, who people question. You know, is this guy really a healer and all of this stuff? But there's just a lot that has happened in my life that I've seen. Um, I've seen it, and I guess I can only attribute it. And this is the the word that people get scared to hear is, I can only attribute it to Jesus. So when I say that, a lot of people like you know get turned off, and they're like, "Oh, you're one of those." Well, what is one of those? Because yeah, yeah, what exactly? I mean, all you're doing is. Uh, if you think about it, what everybody seems to to run towards when it comes to the paranormal is this scattered idea of of uh, uh, a place, but there is no source. It's kind of like a mixture of any place with no source. But what you're doing is attributing uh, a core, a place that is is resonating from a core, a place, a source, and that's that's purely what that, what I kind of see that as being. You're just attributing yep. something of an origin for this kind of uh, an experience it's been a hard it's been a hard road like mm. i i looking back i feel like i was i was lost mm. in a reality that was uh, that was not it was counterfeit it wasn't true and now i feel like now that i have this solid answer yeah. and this relationship uh with jesus i'm like i'm able to um i can see very clearly now it's like uh and it's you know i don't know i don't know how to i don't know really how to describe it um the, the, it's just the trouble in describing it because i you know it, it is it is a, a, a difficult subject to to approach because it's it's i guess it's still kind of new to you this this idea so you're still kind of exploring it that's why exactly. it's so, it's I so feel hard I feel new to it. I can just tell you, you know, the things that I have seen and experienced mm -hmm. have definitely uh, overridden any of my older beliefs. Um, and I've always been, you know, I, I've always considered myself a Christian. Um, back mm -hmm. in, the, in the ghostology days, I, I thought, uh, I saw myself as a skeptic until I started running into things that I couldn't explain. Mm -hmm. And... It was easy to say, well, I guess it is a ghost, or I guess it is, you know, this or that. Um, when the reality is, now I look back and I go, you know, I was fooling myself. I, I could, uh, I couldn't, you know, really make out or determine what was taking place. I no. prided myself in the ability to debunk a lot of the haunted houses and places that were, um, people said were paranormally active. Um, and now it's like, I'm in such a different world. I would love to go back and talk to people, you know, from my, my other life and go, Hey, guess what? This is what I've figured out. This is what I've learned. And, you know, kind and, of share some of the stuff. And it, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. And, and I think that if, as 
you know, I think as grounded as you can be in understanding what it is you're experiencing now, it's, it's always going to be a difficult thing for them to hear because they are still outside of that. They're still in that old belief system. Um, of, exactly. Of and, and so, yeah, I, I think uh, once, once you've kind of got it, you'll kind of know and then you'll be able to just go there and, and and kind of explain it and and it won't seem such a, a big deal i mean the the uh the the jesus aspect of it the the religious aspect of it is it's it's probably where the, all this paranormal thing comes from in the first place it's it's just right. another it's just another way of of looking at it but it's not new it's it's ancient it is and you know what what it's really done is it's just, it's it has affected my work, my, uh, you know, in, in my film, in my film work now, now I have a different set of priorities. Mm -hmm. Actually, I we have the same priority, but now I have a new way of, of understanding what I can do with the gifts and talents that I've been given. I, I seem to have effortlessly, um, succeed, uh, doing anything I want that has to do with uh, being creative. I'm always winning awards. It's not because I'm the best. Um, I'm always, uh, you know, I was told that you can never make a TV show. You know, it's not that easy. Well, I did it. Yes. And I succeeded. And, you know, it's not because I'm the best. I think, uh, I think I just have a, a knack at storytelling and finding what people want to hear. Yes. And showing it uh, through a different, you know, way of, of perspective, I guess which keeps it interesting. So now I have this whole new perspective and I want to add it, uh, to my future work. So instead of just creating horror movies to try and, uh, entertain, I want to share what I'm experiencing these days through film without it being this overtly blatant kind of just docu documentary. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to create fiction that has, um, a redeeming quality and it has a, a side that I, I, I can only say, uh, uh, kind of a, a Jesus culture sort of side through it. Like I, I want to, I want to share what I have experienced and, and the change in my life with everybody. And I want to find a way to do it. That doesn't offend people right off though. You know what? It's going to, in the, you know, begin, in the beginning, it's probably it is probably going to. But if you have that way of actually reaching an audience, like you say, you can tell story, you can reach people in that way, then you have a chance now to to kind of make that work with this, so that people mm -hmm. are are suddenly able to accept it more. That maybe you have a chance to just bring that to a more of a mainstream audience without it becoming um, about that. You know what I mean? I think that's my hope. It really is. I, w I would love to be able to reach people now in a way that could alter their life and give them a better, not just better future here on earth, but like eternal life. You know, um, a lot of people don't know. Uh, and there's a lot right now, Jen and I, we are in, uh, we're in classes. We were attending the Welton Academy, yes. um, which is a very unique way to, learn uh the bible it's uh it's brilliant and it's not the way that i grew up with it you know i grew up going to one of those churches where they stand at the you know at the front and they tell you you know we're going to read this passage and it means this and then you go home and that was that's that and that's that you yeah. know yes yeah. which is and which now is, it's like yeah yeah now it's like this is this is not what that passage meant at all. As a matter of fact, this is what it really means, and this is why it's important, and this is why more people need to know how to how to do this, uh, or at least understand the true contextual um, uh, meaning uh, of the Bible. And of it's yeah. it's mind mind blowing, uh, uh, and it's it's hard. It's one of those things you can't cram into a quick conversation. No, no. Um, but you're going to be able to do that. You're going to be able to do that through the medium of film. Exactly. I can then take away what I've learned and interpret it through film, uh, through my photography. Uh, Jen and I, uh, we, we own a company called Rise Corporate Media. We do a lot of uh, just animation that is corporate. Uh, it doesn't... Um, 
it doesn't involve, you know, what we're learning or how we're growing in the church at all. Mm-hmm. It's more for benefiting businesses and corporate uh, companies like Synchrony Financial and Purdue Pharmaceuticals. Um, basically, right now we're in the middle of uh, animating a, uh, a series of commercials uh, for uh, Colace, which is a stool softener. <laughs> I guess somebody has to do that. <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of funny, but you can't, like, you know, you can't yeah. push your beliefs through stool softeners, I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of joke there. <laughs> but I'll, I'll work but on we're it, wanting... but I don't think I can promise anything. <laughs> <laughs> but we've also been talking about doing some products for uh, for mothers that are, you know, new mothers or for babies and children. And we've talked about, you know, using our talents and animation to creating DVD series or uh, children's books. Um, we're not quite sure where we're going to take that, but we do know we if we can change uh, – change the world through uh, touching people's hearts um, with love and kindness. Yeah. Um, and somehow or another, uh, you know, get people interested in who we are. Maybe there's a chance that they'll get to learn uh, more about our experiences through the church and some of the neat things that we've learned that mm-hmm. will blow people's minds, you know? And um, do, you, do you kind of look through the things that you've done with film, that the the short films that you've done. And and can you see the new the new you in there? Can you kind of like look at there look at things in a different way, the things that you have done and say, Oh well if I look that look at this now with the eyes that I'm looking at with now, I can see things differently. Do you know what I mean? It has Absolutely. That... So have you actually had yeah. that experience with anything that you've you've done before and it suddenly means something different. So, so that's a great that's a great thing to even bring up. Mm. So, it has a, my my life change has affected me. Um, having uh, uh, the spirit uh, of Jesus inside me has given me a new way to look at things and a new perspective. Mm. And I'll tell you, it, it is fascinating. I have gone back. A lot of my photo- photography in the past was um, erotic photography. I guess yes. Um, I would only say that that's what it's called because that's the that's the subject uh, uh, that's the category. That's how it just gets categorized. Um, yeah. But I look at it and I go, you know, it's still I can see I can see the beauty in it um, without it being erotic, and mm-hmm. I'm finding a new way of showing that without the eroticism, uh, still finding the beauty and, and, uh, the shape of the body. Um, and, and it not being something that turns people on, you know, uh, not that that was my goal ever. I w- I've always focused on beauty, but I had a, I had definitely a darker edge, a different point of view when I was uh, creating my old photography and my film work, since it was mostly horror. Um, Here's what's interesting about horror movies. You can't show them to grandmothers uh, or to little children because, it's, sure. it, you know, it, you can you can affect them. Uh, but when I watch what I've done, I go, you know, that was there's there's another there's another way I can see it. I'm not ashamed of what I've done at all. I lo- I think I've done a really good job. Um mm-hmm. But in my next in my next pieces, I see uh, techniques that I utilized, and and say like Sarah's Crossing. There's some shots that we got that I just love. I would then uh, take that same style and that that same uh, way of looking at things and apply it to my new films. I you know I I don't think I'm going to change the way I tell stories, but I think when I look back, you know there was a lot of blood i liked uh and that one film she kills an alien and she's just covered in this gunk i thought that was fun yeah um and you know will i do i see you know i i see the the um the beauty and the way i did it 
Um, but then again, I can't show it to everybody. Like my kids right now, uh, they haven't seen any of my films because they can't, you know, they're, they're not, and I, I don't think I ever want them to see unless, you know, they're an adult and they're curious and they're, hmm, yeah. you know, themselves. I think, I think but, the, the, the one thing that I know that I recognize in the short films that you have done is, is movement. It's kinetic. Uh, right. It's moving from from one thing to another to another. You you don't you don't just shoot in a room. You're very uh, you, you want to just keep <laughs> keep things moving. And I think that's that's kind of how you uh, I, I perceive you as in your nature. You're like you said, in your growing up, you you moved to, to California and you moved around. Your your mind right. is kinetic. Your writing is kinetic. And I feel as though that you yourself, you, you want to just keep keep things rolling and moving and that's the one connection that i'm kind of threading between between everything here um wow it's movement get, get out of my head <laughs> get out of the what that's a, that's a, get out of my head <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i think you I think you hit something that i haven't even put together that's crazy yeah i think you're right but yeah um you don't want to stay in the frame you don't want to stay in the frame you want to just keep it keep it going yeah, I I like I like things to do. I like having things happening. Um, I, and it's funny in all my uh, all the work I've done. I, I guess I always like a a good ending. Like I want something to happen that's positive. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. though you know, or or a laugh, like kind of a like uh, in the end of Sarah's Crossing. I have the couple that you know. She, uh, they're in a car and you think that the main character is going to be saved and she doesn't get saved and they don't even see her and they're arguing like an old couple and drive off. And I, I like the humor at the end of, at the end of all of that movement, you know, and, and suspense and you're wondering what's going to happen. Hmm. Um, I want a good chuckle at the end and I'm hoping that's the way my life, my life goes is it's, there's going to be a big laugh and we're all going to have a good time. You know, my last few breaths, at least I hope so. <laughs> well, I think you're going the right way about it. That's uh, that at least is, uh, is coming through. I gotta say, I can't do, and I wouldn't be who I am right now. If it wasn't for Jen, uh, my wife, she has, her goal was never to, um, was never to do anything but care about me. Mm -hmm. And it's been, a, it's been an interesting story. Our story is definitely probably too soon to tell the whole story, but it's been, it's been, uh, we have been very close from the very first day and it's just been uh, a great friendship that grew into understanding each other's hearts and how our hearts were, were both broken in certain areas. And we realized that um, our broken pieces fit together perfectly. Like we are definitely one person together. And, you know, I've often wondered if that even existed for real, if that was, um, that was even like my parents have that. Mm -hmm. And I've always wondered, you know, well, I, is it possible to find that? I, and I gave up looking, you know, a long time ago. And, mm -hmm. and she shows up and life just, cause she showed me things that I just never, I, I had either given up on or I, my eyes were just closed to. And yeah, I gotta say, I have never been as happy as I am now. And I think we did peak when we got the chickens. I think you're right. But yeah. I think bear cubs in December might be us jumping the shark. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It would be, uh -oh. it'll be your happy day season 12 moment, whatever that is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but you know what? I, I think I can relate uh, definitely because uh, it, it's strange because when I met Catherine, um, people said, you know, things happened so fast. And it was a, a kind of a bone of contention with a few people. And it was a very strange right. thing. But it was it was one thing that when we were seeing things with you and Jen progressing, um, you know, there, there were, and I hope it's okay to talk about, but there were some difficulties with yeah. people kind of understanding, you know, 
how things f happen and how things flow. But when, <laughs> when I met Catherine, everything happened so fast because the, the bad things that we had before, like you said, just seemed to just fit together and heal. And it was it's and and when once you find that you don't just take things slow. It's just not natural. <laughs> you just you you fuse it and you stay together, and it, it it's it's like glue. You can't just you can't just kind of ease it back and forth. It's not like elastic. Once you're there, right. you're there, and you, and you know, uh, and who's to say really how fast things should be in this world? I mean, it's uh. It, it was an incredible judgment, and I kind of thought, you know, this is this is just going as it should be, and that's uh, absolutely yeah, yeah. And speed schmied, it's like <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, and I think you nailed it. I don't think that there are any rules yeah. as to how fast something should go. If it's going and it's going that fast then that's how fast it should go. That's exactly what it's what it's designed to be in, in that great <laughs> energy of, of the world. And that's it. That's it. We were just, uh, you know, so I, I can totally, totally understand that. And it was, uh, it was actually nice to see somebody else going at full speed for a change. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that makes both of us very happy to hear. <laughs> it's good, yeah. And you know, I I, I think now it, it kind of all it, it, it's all settled down and it's all making sense. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I, I really am glad because I was afraid that you're going to walk away from the film uh, side of things. And uh, oh right, I was thinking, oh no, we, we've we've lost somebody who was really into film and loved film and seemed to fit with it so well. And uh, and I think that was probably uh, some of the kind of uh, the concerns was, uh, was like for our own selfish things of we're not going to see a Brian Buys production again. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you this: we have um, we have Hacksaw Ridge coming out next month, and then mm -hmm. Rogue One. Um, I don't think I can stop film. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. <laughs> There's a lot going on, and yeah. I have to still be part of it somehow. And I'm going to tell my story, yes. and I'm going to do it with Jen by my side. That's exactly how this is going to go. It's going to be awesome. That'll be good. That'll be good. And uh, you know, we we just can't wait to start seeing things um, as they evolve. Of course, you know, things are going to take time, but uh, you're 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 basically starting from scratch from in, in in there in Georgia because in Utah you had pretty much an established team of, of people you were working with. Um, are, right. Are you, are you seeing any, any possible future relating with them on any product projects or have you basically gone your separate ways? I think, I think, uh, distance is going to keep, uh, the Utah crew in Utah. And, mm -hmm. um, I've come back home to a uh, really good friends, uh, Tommy Wood, uh, that I went to high school with and part of college. He is a filmmaker here in Georgia. We've mm -hmm. been hanging out with talking, sharing ideas. We both have the same passion in, in Christ and we both have the same passion in film. Mm -hmm. He's done some really good films uh, that are funny and unique and edgy, and we both want to do more uh, that does speak on our heart and and mm -hmm. uh, and is truth related without without it being not entertaining. We still want it to be exciting and unique. Um, yes. And and randomly, uh, I ended up um, getting an email from. Uh, Stratton Leopold, who is a producer from uh, Captain America and uh, uh, Mission Impossible, um, and he lives in Savannah, and we've been going back and forth, uh, lightly bringing up uh, a conversation. I think it's going to be one of those things that we're going to have to just drive to Savannah and sit down and, mm -hmm. and just talk, but it was kind of an accidental uh, thing Jen and I did. We were... We were looking to start an ice cream shop, and the next thing you know, we're getting emails from him, and I'm like, holy cow, this guy's big. <laughs> I had no idea who he was, you know, and then I'm like, wow, this guy has done some really big film work. This is, uh, yeah. this is a, so. And he's right there on your I doorstep. Think, that's, that's, yeah, that's great. He is. 
I got his, uh, he texted me a couple of weeks ago. It was the last time we, we spoke. Um, and it's kind of nice to know that, you know, when I'm ready, mm-hmm. uh, I think, I, I think I've got the beginnings of a really great crew here. And I can tell you this, uh, a lot of people may or may not know, uh, that you, uh, wrote a script, uh, based on the concept I had. And I still think that that script and that entire film is, it fits the new me. Like, I think that the story still has, uh, has so much to it and it's so cool and it's sci-fi. I, I see it still fitting. I, it's, it's definitely something that is never, it's not going to be lost, but it's going to actually come to fruition. That, that's, that sounds amazing. That would be, uh, because I, I, I can't, I can't imagine um, that story <laughs> sitting to for too long. Oh, no. It's, it's. Uh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed writing that so much because everything that was there was in that short, and uh, yeah. there's there's family, there's existential crisis, there's uh, there's a human crisis to it, and then the, there's that. There's a lot of selfless energy in there too. So, well, I'm excited, and I, and I know that you were uh, you and I were talking about, hey, mm-hmm. let's to the, turn it into a book series, and I think that's a brilliant idea. That, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot here. There's you a, know, there's a big yeah. It's uh, there's an expanding universe that's that's there, and I think that it's uh, uh, quite possibly there. Are, there are a few links to. Uh, uh, to other adventures that uh, that go beyond this oh, one story, I think so too. I, well, I'm excited, and I know mm. it's going to happen. Mm. Yeah, that would be one of those. That would be that would hurt my feelings if we never did that. <laughs> yeah, I think. So. Uh, yeah, same same here. And um, yeah, I, I would be. Yeah, <laughs> the, the thing is, I think it's one of those things that. Uh, you, you, it's got to if if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, and it has to be organic. It has to be right, yeah. and you, you can't just yeah. put something forward if it's not going to fly. Right, and you know, all of your listeners are going, Stephen. What are you talking about? I no, no, they're they're going to be going you... crazy. All all five all five of them. Oh. All five of them. <laughs> yeah, and, and two of them are my mother. I don't know how that works, but yeah. <laughs> well, she's got two accounts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah yeah. Well, as as you will know, we, we've we've had a film podcast before, and uh, you know we, we've um, this is now the new um, format of of uh, of my own podcast. Cool. Headline this, so uh, it's all about creative people. It's all about dynamic people who have unique ways of 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 working with their creativity and this is definitely one of those those unique ways and i think that that's uh you know i, I don't think it's something that people should be afraid of and i think it's uh, it's a beautiful thing it's it's going to you know there's there's so much there's so much the thing is there's so much religion in all the ideas even star wars is is so Absolutely. symbolic yep. of of uh, evangelical uh, notions and uh, and I don't see I, I can't understand why so many are, are worried about those kind of um, explanations right. for things because it's all there it's it's a part of every single story you know you can't uh, you can't escape from that I'm excited for Rogue One I, I really you? can't wait to see <laughs> yeah so, so, sci-fi is just one of those things that is is it's closer uh it's, it's closer to that idea the uh yep. th- than any of the other genres i think i've i've got so many there's one i cannot wait it's going to be a short film and it'll probably be my first step into uh telling a story mm-hmm. of america and uh i wanted to be so moving uh and so powerful that uh that people get um goosebumps you know they get excited when they see it oh yes yeah and then this is uh this uh you, your first short with the new crew this are you actually putting this yeah. as your this, first one this will be my first one and honestly i haven't even written the script yet i've only said it out loud about eight times yeah and and everyone seems interested so 
We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. it's just going to be one of the things I just have to do when we have time. You know, <laughs> that's it. That's it. But it'll be a good springboard to kind of get you in the right direction. Yeah, I think we're going to get through the uh, through the fall and winter and uh, yeah. see what spring and looks like. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Well, awesome, Stephen. I've I've had a great time talking to you. By the way, it's, it's been it's a been long great. time. It has been a long time, and I, now, well, I've got, now I've got now I've got your you. number. I've got your real number. I don't have a number from the Dominican <laughs> Republic, which I believe was no, where. That's... <laughs> <laughs> You've got my real number. Oh that's my it. goodness! Fantastic. Well, uh, Jen, do you have anything to add? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shy. <laughs> she's very shy. shy. Well, not very, but she, she's shy enough. Oh, that's perfect. I mean, uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been great to uh, to talk to you. And uh... Stephen, thank you so much. I had a blast. So did Jen, and she's smiling really big. Um, I can't wait to hear the podcast. So you have to tag me on Facebook. Will do. And uh, keep keep me up to date with all your projects. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them. And I love watching, watching uh, not watching, I, lo- I love looking at your work on Rise on that uh, page anyway. Did you want to uh, to pitch anything on that? What, what's the address for? Yes, it is risecorporatemedia.com. And uh, we just, we make animations uh, for companies, for businesses. So there, there it is. If you need something animated, give us a call. We will animate uh, stool softener commercials just for you. That's that's. I think we should get them as our sponsor. You know, let's. Uh... What? Collate. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, thank you very much, Brian. Thank you, Jen, and uh, uh, peace out to you all, and uh, enjoy your evening. You too, Stephen. Thanks. Thanks a lot, buddy. All right. Bye. Okay. Now you hang up. <laughs> he did well there we go that was the podcast and thank you very much Brian Byers for uh, coming on the show and, and talking uh, candidly about things um, and, and, it, and it's incredible how uh, a change in your life can propel you in a different direction for the better and I think for Brian and Jen they've got a lot going for them for the future and I'm so happy for them so proud of them and um, hopefully soon we'll be able to see some more content from Brian Byers and uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep um, I'm gonna keep pushing his buttons about getting that feature made definitely and if you can find risecorporatemedia.com you can have a look at what uh, Brian and Jen have been up to with their commercial work their animations their illustrations anything you need doing I'm, I'm excited for them both and um, Brian also has links to his Facebook page on um, on that website as well so that is risecorporatemedia.com and if you want to find any more of these podcasts you can go directly to stephenradford.com you can find Headline This on iTunes as well as YouTube under the um, the Roasted Portions channel and if you want to go technical then you can just type in SR5. No, hang on. SR5SE. How did I not know that? SR5SE. That's, that, that's my little short code for finding my videos on there. Um, there's some amusing stuff. But uh, there we go. Um, more podcasts in the future, hopefully. Don't forget to listen back to Melissa Burke and Denver Robbins. This has been Brian Byers' episode. And um, I'm, I'm happy to say that um, that um, I'm going to go get a nap. This has been, uh, it's been a busy Halloween. How's it been for you guys? Good? Filled up with candy yet? Are you? Are you sure? You, you can just handle just one more, right? Yeah? You sure, you sure you're full? Okay. Alright. I'll let you off. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>